All right, guys, I know what you're thinking already. Why the heck is Jay taking a look at a TV? But this isn't the first one I've taken a look at. In fact, last year we took a look at LG's OLED 65EG9600, which was an amazing TV. Um, but it had some things that I wished that it had, uh, but it, that it didn't, that the new LG B6 actually has, which is why we're kind of reviewing this again. Now, a huge thank you to LG for sending over this TV for review. They did send this specifically as a media review sample. So it's important to let you know that this is 100% my opinions. Everything you're gonna hear me say today is my opinion and my opinion only. And I want to make sure that you guys understand that that is the way things are always going to be. So a huge thank you to LG for sending this over. But remember what you're gonna hear is 100% my opinion. And now that business is out of the way, let's talk about why we're looking at this today. OLED technology or organic LED, it's not new. It's new in this format, but it's not new. We actually saw this years ago on small displays like tablets and cell phones, and uh, it became apparent immediately that the contrast range that you can get with OLED is unmatched. I mean, even in the old days of plasma, where plasmas were like, plasma gives you a true black. It, plasma also couldn't give you the dynamic range you needed to also take it to that next level, which is exactly what we're looking at here with this OLED technology. Now, LG advertises an infinite contrast range. OLED is the first time we are seeing a true 100% black, which is amazing because that opened up the door to something else, which is what we have today, which is HDR or high dynamic range. We'll talk more about that in a second. Now, I believe their claim, although I don't have a scope that I can put on this TV to actually measure, is this truly an infinite contrast ratio? I have a funny story to tell you here real quick. My daughter is, she's almost two, and she's always taking the remote control and changing settings on things. And she changed the settings on my set top box to when the show is over, it doesn't pop up the little play menu to tell you the show has ended, you know, pause recording, delete, whatever. It just stops. It just goes to a black screen and stops. And I didn't know that. So my older daughter, who's seven, says, Daddy, something's wrong with the TV. Every time my show is done, the TV turns off. And I'm going, what? what is it? I'm coming down here and I'm watching TV. And then sure enough, the show ended and the TV turned off. And I'm going, what the heck? The power light's still on. I actually thought something was defective with the TV, but I thought that doesn't make sense because the TV is only playing the signal being sent to it by the set-top box. Then I started messing around with it and I realized what was happening was the screen was going black, but it was so dang black I thought that the panel turned off because I'm used to LED slash LCD, you know, or CFL backlit flat panels that still have some light bleed that comes through the panel when it's turned on. You guys know what I'm talking about. You turn on your computer, you turn on your panel, the panel flicks on, you can tell the backlit turned on and the black screen turns kind of a gray color. Well, you don't get that with OLED. You get a true black, one that made me feel like an idiot because I thought the TV wasn't turning on. That's actually pretty damn cool if you think about it. Now that kind of segues me here into the next segment about brightness, which is the next challenge when it comes to creating a true high dynamic range TV. Now the challenge has always been developing a TV that can one, go dark enough to retain the details in the lows, like things in shadows, right? You look at a dark hallway or a dark alleyway in a movie, is it just gonna look like one washed out shadow? Or are you gonna retain those fine details in there? The same goes, and this is actually the harder part, retaining details in the highlights, which are things that go towards the clipping or, or white, where all of the detail is lost because it's too bright. Well, this TV has 20 stops of dynamic range, which gives you an extremely wide range of brightness to work with, which is why it has all the certifications that are expected uh, for high definition or high dynamic range content. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about before we move on to WebOS, because this is more than just a TV, is that 10-bit color that I mentioned just a second ago, because you might be used to hearing the, the 18 million colors because of RGB. Well, this TV, because of its 10-bit color, is able to produce 1.07 billion colors. Not million, billion. This TV here is more than just a TV. It is also a complete home entertainment system. It's got all of the popular streaming apps in there. It's got YouTube, it's got Hulu, it's got Netflix, but it's got a full on web browser in there. It's got LG apps, access to things like weather, traffic, news. It's just, it's all that. You can even attach a camera to this and you can have video conference calls on here. It has a microphone. But setup on this thing is also ridiculously easy. When you plug it in, it automatically will detect if there's a wired internet connection or you can connect it to wireless. It's gonna update itself with the latest firmwares. You tell it 
who your TV provider is. It will set up the box so that you can have a single remote to control everything. OLED HDR technology, like I mentioned, it, it, it allows you to, it, this TV is in a category of its own. If you don't believe me, go to Best Buy, go somewhere where these are on display and just look for yourself. It is absolutely a game changer when it comes to TVs. And right now it's the only OLED panel is the only OLED panels are available by LG. What I want to do quickly here as I start to wrap up this video is talk about some of the things that have changed with this panel versus the original OLED panel I took a look at last year, which was the 65EG9600. The panel I looked at last year was curved. It also had a flat option. The one I'm looking at here now is a flat option. This one is a 65 inch. It's almost edge to edge, not quite, but it's pretty dang close. It is thin as Com compared to the, cur the curved panel, this one's even thinner because the curved has to have some rigidity, right? Because it's curved. This one's even thinner than that. Of course, the base is a bit thicker where the electronics are. This one has more HD, uh, HDMI ports. Once you hook up an HDR source to it, it's gonna detect that it's HDR. You can even tell it go to HDR mode. It will set itself up and you don't have to touch any of those expert settings or calibration. It is ready to go out of the box. Now, of course, you can calibrate it and go into the expert mode and change things, but I, I don't feel that that's necessary. The color on this is amazing. It's not like oversaturated. It is, it is accurate and true, exactly as you would expect it to be. Because of the amount of colors it can create and the HDR, it's very close to what you see with your eyes in reality. But one thing I was glad to see is it's also got a standard VESA mount on the back of the TV, which was something that the TV last year didn't have. It had, it had its own proprietary mount, which kind of sucked. You spend a pretty penny for this TV, then you've got to go buy a special mount for it. Not the case anymore. You can use whatever wall mount you want. In this case here, I installed an articulating wall mount that allows me to make the TV look like it's floating. It's kind of away from the wall. I add some nice backlight to it. The backlighting you see is not part of the TV. It's actually something LED strips that I added. I'm actually a little bit worried that I sound way too excited about this, but guys, I've had this installed now for several weeks and I've been looking at OLED TVs now in the living room for over a year. I did like a whole living room remodel to do that last review. And I did, I did quite a bit of work too to get this one installed. I had to change the mount, which was kind of the sucky thing about them going back to VESA mount was I had to get another mount in here. So it was kind of like a double-edged sword, but that's okay. It's a, that's something I'll, I'll gladly live with. But I'm curious, you guys tell me, how do you feel about this panel technology? It's not cheap. It's really not. Um, it, is, it is cutting edge, but the price has come down significantly compared to where OLED first debuted and where we are today, which is kind of the normal progression of technology. So I'm curious as to what you guys think about this. I can't wait until we see this on desktop. Uh, that infinite contrast ratio, HDR. As long as the refresh rate is there, then we're good. Guys, sound off in the comments. Tell me what you think about this. What TV are you using? And of course, if you live near Best Buy, don't take my word for it. Go there, look, and I, and I mentioned Best Buy. They're not a sponsor or anything, but I mentioned that only because it's the only place personally near me that I know has one on display. But if you go anywhere, they've got LG, uh, authorized retailer, you will see a display for the OLED technology, I guarantee it. Go and look, then comment and tell me what you think. Time to go guys, as always, huge thank you once again to LG for sending this TV over. Movie, movie watching has never been the same. In fact, I've barely been to the theaters ever since I've taken a look at these panels because they are so amazing. I, I've spent so much money, like my 4K Blu-ray player and stuff, I, I paid for all that. I remodeled the whole living room last year just to enjoy it. And I'm a, I'm a sucker for these types of these types of videos. I'm not just a PC guy, guys. I'm not just a PC guy, guys. I'm, I just love tech. Tech is so cool. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'm rambling now. As always, I'll see you in the next one. Talk to you later.